Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop and the beginning of a new series. In this series, I will address how I manufacture this 3D printer enclosure, including everything from the concrete slab to the enclosure itself, the electronics, and also how I modified the printer to work with this unit, as in having the power supply on the outside and all the non-heat sensitive stuff on the inside, you know, where it's heated, and also a performance review. Uh, this video, however, will just be covering the manufacture of this bottom concrete slab and the things I learned along the way. Let's get started.
looks like this is going to be our result. Because of the melamine, we end up with a nice flat surface. I took almost no care in tapping air out of the mold, right? So there's a bunch of air bubbles, but that's not the worst thing in the world is I think that actually adds to the visual appearance of the concrete. Another interesting feature is all the damaged and cracking uh, at the corners. That could have been helped by better uh, packing of the mold and possibly giving it more time to cure before removing it and being more careful when removing it. Um, but, you know, other than a few bits and bobs, I think the actual core of the slab is pretty good. Okay, so congratulations. You've seen me manufacture the concrete slab. Now it's time to start talking about the things that I learned along the way, or in some cases remembered, that I would love to, you know, advise to anyone doing this project for themselves, or my previous self before I started doing it. Not that that's possible. This is quite a doozy, so better get seated. Let's get started. First thing I would like to address is dimensional stability. The offcuts I made for the edges of the mold, um, those were not cut perfectly. My table saw cuts on a couple degree angle, and that results in my slab actually ballooning out. Uh, luckily, in this application, it wasn't actually critical, but if you were in an application where you needed it to be, where you needed it to be perfect, uh, you'd have to pay attention to things like these and cut on good quality equipment. Number two, I'd like to address the complexity of the slab. I really only did this because it's the thing I'm familiar with. I've done it on my concrete table once before, as well as several other pieces, but I have to admit it's too complicated. So what did I do? I laid down one layer of concrete, a piece of metal, a second layer of concrete with a different mix design, this time including glass fibers, a third layer or a second layer of metal, and a third layer of concrete. Now, why is that a bad idea? It's a bad idea because I'm complicating it with two additional pieces of metal and technically three separate mixes. Were I to do this again, I would simplify a few things. As an example, using one mix of concrete and one piece of metal in the middle, or using one mix of concrete, no metal, or better yet, using one mix of concrete with the fiber to provide that mechanical stability with no metal at all. Point number three actually harkens back to the previous point. I didn't mix enough concrete. I mixed too many different times with too small batches. It's really easy to uh, underestimate the amount of concrete you're gonna need. And in my case, because I was mixing multiple different batches, I had to be more accurate. I had to get closer to the right amount. But if I were pouring a big slab, you know, I would mix much bigger batches. And even on this slab, I should have mixed bigger batches because I spent most of my time mixing and not a lot of time pouring. And that really added some extra stress to this whole scenario. Um, the fourth point actually kind of harkens back to the previous two points as well. Um, I had a lot of trouble smoothing out the concrete. Why? Because the concrete I used had a lot of this larger aggregate, which normally isn't a problem, but I'm print, but I'm trying to smooth out this very thin slab and even thinner because of that metal. And it got to the point where my trowel would actually, you know, catch rocks because the rocks couldn't sink down any further because they're trapped by that metal. So my trowel would flip over rocks and it would ruin the slab. And it's really difficult to smooth it with this design. So what are the solutions? One, either simplify it and put the metal deeper down, less metal, or two, you can just filter out the larger aggregate. Now, point number five, preparation. Honestly, this should be point number one. Preparation is everything. I cannot emphasize that enough. When you're on the job, you don't have time to be looking for tools. You don't have time to be worrying about, oh no, did I get concrete on my nice clothing? You don't have time for that nonsense. So make sure that all your tools are laid out ahead of time. Make sure that you got plastic everywhere on the floor. Make sure you're not worried about the mess. And make sure that you're wearing clothing that you're not worried about the mess. That will save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble. And it's a lot easier and nicer to clean things up when it's not time sensitive. So that caused problems. It added stress to the job. 
I guess this is point number six, air bubbles, air bubbles. So in my case, I actually had a lot of air bubbles. Some people like air bubbles. It can add to the aesthetics. Air bubbles are fine, honestly. Um, the problem is when you have air bubbles, too many of them or in the wrong places. In my case, I had barely any air bubbles in the middle of the slab. I had a lot on my corners and edges. Corners and edges need to be stronger. Corners and edges shouldn't have as many air bubbles. I actually had concrete chipping off more because I used, or because I didn't tap down the, my molds enough. And why didn't I tap down the molds? Well, that harkens back to all the previous points. I didn't have time. I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't mix things right. I didn't manage my time properly. So that's one of the things you need to think about is tapping out the air. Number seven, I took it out of the mold too soon. I had chunks chip off the corners. Now, would that have happened if I had better mix design, more consistent, tapped out the air? Probably not. But also, leaving it in the mold for more than you know 24 hours, for at least three days, seven days, or technically a full cure at 28 days is a great thing to do because it means that you're at a significantly lower risk of damaging it when you pull it out of the mold. Now, number eight. Number eight, this entire thing, completely unnecessary. Now, why do I say that? It's not because concrete's a bad idea. No, concrete's a great idea. It's because I didn't have to do it. Why did I have to do it? Good question. It just so happens that the measurement of this slab is 24 inches by 24 inches. Now, if you live anywhere in North America, you hear 24 inches, you think two feet. Well, that's a pretty common size. So what's available in common sizes and also is made out of concrete, in slabs of concrete? Patio blocks. You can buy 24 inch by 24 inch patio blocks, you know, an inch and a half, two inches thick, no problem. So in this case, I could have totally bought a patio block. I didn't think of that till after this was already done. I should have just done that. Then it would be dimensionally perfect. I wouldn't have to worry about any of the messy, dirty job, none of the stress. And honestly, considering, you know, the labor, the materials, it probably would have been cheaper too patio block instead if you can't do a patio block or you don't want to do a patio block you need a special size you need a special mix design a color a specific look go right ahead just make sure you prepare adequately but if you can i'd highly recommend it because it can save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble congratulations if you made it this far sincerely congratulations if you care to join me for the next video I would like to discuss the enclosure, the electronics, and maybe even a little bit more if I have time. We'll see. In the meantime, if you've liked this video, I would encourage you to drop a like. I'm legally required to say that. And also, if you have any questions, I would encourage you to leave them in the comments section below. I'd be very happy to answer them. And lastly, you know, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm signing off.